Let's find out what's happening in the world of sports. Selena Sykes is here. Hi, Selena. Uh, some big news here in France. Hervé Renard has been officially appointed as the new coach of the French women's team. Yeah, that's right. He'd been uh, very closely linked to the role uh, for a while since uh, Corinne Diak got uh, sacked uh, earlier this month. And those rumours seem to be almost a certainty when Renard resigned as the coach of Saudi Arabia on Tuesday evening. He signed a contract with France until August 2024. That's just after the Olympics. The Frenchman very memorably led Saudi Arabia to a shock victory against the eventual winners at Argentina at the World Cup last year in the group stages. Renard has won the Africa Cup of Nations twice with the Ivory Coast and Zambia. While he has a very impressive CV in the men's game, this is his first role in, the, in women's football and he'll be hitting the ground running with less than four months to go until the Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand this summer. Renard is expected to announce his squad list tomorrow ahead of two friendlies for France, first against Colombia and then Canada as part of their preparation for the tournament. His first big task will be to ease tensions in the team with several high-profile players, including the captain Wendy Renard, having walked out in protest against Corinne Diacre's leadership. Staying with football, eight-time Women's Champions League winners Lyon are in unfamiliar territory. They head into the second leg of their quarter-final clash against Chelsea with a 1-0 deficit. The holders travel to Stamford Bridge. Lyon have been knocked out just once in their previous 13 quarter-finals in the Champions League. The star striker and Champions League all-time top scorer Ada Hegebert starts on the bench. She played in the League R over the weekend and scored on her return from injury. Chelsea reached the final in 2021 but lost out to Barcelona. They're yet to have won the competition. Captain Madalena Eriksson says they're hoping to feed off the home support. And manager Emma Hayes says the team know they have a tough task against the eight-time champions. We know what to expect. It's the champions of uh, of Europe over a long period of time for very good reason. So it's not like um, we're playing a team that uh, is not used to being in that position. We know the threats. We have to have the right mentality to begin with, and we have to be brave. Um, you you have to appreciate that you know their record speaks for itself. But it's important for us as a team to impose ourselves, um, be aggressive in the right moments, um, be positive in everything we do on and off the ball. International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach has slammed what he called the politicisation of sport in, over Russia. His words come after several European countries criticised recommendations made by the IOC on Tuesday for the return of Russian and Belarusian athletes to international competitions as neutrals. Athletes from the two countries have largely been banned from competitions since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February last year, with few exceptions, most notably in tennis. The IOC did not give a final decision on their participation at the Olympics next year. The recommendations prompted a condemnation from several governments, including Germany and Poland, that had this to say about their reactions. It is deplorable. Uh, to see that uh, some governments do not want uh, to respect the majority within the Olympic uh, movement and of all stakeholders, nor the autonomy of uh, sport. It cannot be up to the governments to decide which athlete can participate in which competition. This would be the end of world sport as we know it today. Let's end with some tennis. Yannick Sinner is through to the semi-finals of the Miami Open after beating Emil Roussevori in straight sets. The game was delayed for two hours with Sinner up at two to love in the second set due to rain. But the delay didn't stop him from maintaining his perfect record in Miami. Italian has now won all eight sets he's played at this year's tournament. He needed just one hour and 15 minutes to win 6-3, 6-1. And he'll be uh, facing the winner of the blockbuster quarterfinal between the world number one, Carlos Alcaraz, and Taylor Spritz. Uh, that game was supposed to be played uh, yesterday, Tom, but uh, like many of the matches in Miami, it uh, was uh, postponed due to rain. So we'll be keeping an eye on that one tonight.
Okay, thank you very much indeed for that. Selena Sykes with the sports, thank you very much. That's it from us. I'll be back in three minutes. Stay tuned.